Well, hello, class. Welcome to uh, what is officially on the books, anyway, the final day of our spring one term. Um, man, I, I don't know if I you caught my grin as I uh, came on uh, to the screen, but I was reading through uh, so many of your your comments, and uh, man, I just got to tell you, I um, I'm so I'm so thankful for this class. Uh, your takeaways, your connections, your conversations, your insights, everything that you've brought. You've brought so much to the table. And I, and I hope that you, um, I hope that you realize that. That's, that's my hope. That's my prayer. I hope that you, you know, I hope that what we're able to see in this academic experience uh, is that, yes, you're the student, right? So, so yes, you're absolutely the student. Um, and yes, I'm absolutely the instructor. But to tell you how much I've learned, or even here's the thing that's, that's beautiful. This is what I love about the, the educational uh, learning process, especially when I'm on this side and you're on that side, if you want to look at it that way, is that I know, um, so my thinking is influenced by the way that I see things, right? So I read a book and I go, oh, okay, I see it this way. And then you read a book, and, and your thinking is influenced by the way that you see it, right? So we each have our own lens through which we see certain things. Um, <clears throat> and so, so I may not think of something the same way that you think of something. And so as I'm reading, I'm, I'm writing, I'm thinking, and you're reading, you're writing, you're thinking, you're articulating perhaps the very same thing, just from a different perspective. You know, it's, um, <clears throat> I can't remember the, the name, but it's the thinking hats, I think is what it looks at. Um, uh, and and so basically, you probably heard it, and there's all sorts of different variations. But it's this idea that if, if let's say that we all are, um, let, let's say that that we're all blind, okay, and we're all feeling, uh, you know, an, an elephant, okay. So we're feeling the elephant, and you're on the left side, and I'm on the right side, and someone else is over here on the the back side, and someone on the front side, and someone's on top, and so we're all feeling the same thing, right? We're all, but we're not seeing it, okay? We're not, even if we were to, to be seeing, you know, different things, uh, and I'll get to the seeing component, but we're feeling, we're feeling things. So I, we're all feeling it. So if we were to be asked to describe what it is that you're feeling, we would describe different components, right? So if I'm on the back, I'm feeling the tail. If you're on the front, you're feeling the trunk, right? If you're on the side, you maybe you're feeling if it has tusks, the tusks. If you're on the other side, you're feeling a leg. We're all describing the same animal. <clears throat> it's just that we're describing different components. Same thing if we're on a, uh, four sides of a house. I'm thinking of my home right now. So if I'm on the front side of the house, I'm describing windows, multiple windows in a front door. And actually, I, I see it, right? I see this house. If you're on the right side, you're describing um, a very just just blank wall with one window. If you're on the back side... You're describing um, the back of my house uh, with multiple windows, with solar panels, with sheds. And then if you're on the left side, you're describing the sliding glass door and the windows and, and you're describing the patio cover. We're all describing the same exact thing. We're all seeing, actually literally seeing the same exact thing, but we're seeing it from different perspectives. And so if I were to say to the person on the back side of the house and I'm on the front side of the house, no, you're describing it wrong because you're seeing it differently than I'm seeing it. Or if I were on the back side of the elephant and, and, and you were describing the tusk while I was feeling the, the tail and I was saying you're feeling wrong, well, well, neither of those responses are actually right. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure, I'm sure that it does, right? So we all see things, we all feel things differently. So we should never assume that there's this one-size-fits-all approach to our academic understanding. Never should I assume, even as an instructor, that the way that I'm explaining something is going to make the same amount of sense or it's going to mean the same thing to you as it does to me, which is why we have to approach academics from this more collaborative community approach where I get to learn from you. I hope that that I'm getting to teach you things and you're learning from me, but I'm just as interested in learning from you as I hope that you are from me. I hope that it's this mutual, this, this, this learning, um, uh, this relationship of mutual learning, this mutuality, if you will.
right? This re reciprocity, where yes, I'm an instructor, but I'm also learner. <laughs> and yes, you're a learner, but you're also doing a form of instruction by way of how you communicate with your with your colleagues, your classmates, how you then take this content that we've learned. I saw one of you made a comment. I want to be able to explain vocation to other people in the same way that Benner and Keller and Bridges and on and on these folks have explained it to me, right? So I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but there's a great um, podcast that Christianity Today does. And uh, on it, uh, his last kind of hurrah as he left Christianity Today, um, Andy Crouch, who was the executive editor of the magazine, um, just a phenomenal, phenomenal man who's written some amazing stuff, loves the Lord, uh, and is just killing it. Just everything he touches, he's one of those guys, everything he touches turns to gold in my mind. Anyway, So he, he has recently left Christianity Today. And he went to work for um, the John Templeton Foundation. I think his title there is, maybe you heard this, maybe we even talked about it, but it's worth repeating. But his title is, I think it's the Director of Strategic Communication. And so he says, I didn't discover my calling until I was in my 40s. And again, if I'm repeating this, I think it's worth repeating because I, I think it's such a great reminder. He says, and my calling is not the job that I do. The calling that I feel that God has placed in me, right, that has birthed in me, as many of you said that, you know, I, I learned that, that uh, or I unlearned that uh, my calling is not a job, um, or even I think one of the things that said here, um, I unlearned the idea that everyone needs to find a job that they're passionate about, and relearn. I love how this is put. Oh, this is so good. And relearn the idea that everyone is capable of finding a job that is satisfying if they change their perspective on where the meaning and value of work comes from. That's what we've been talking about. And so, so, so Crouch leaves, uh, and he's on this podcast talking about his calling. He says, I didn't discover my calling until I was in my 40s, which I think is great news for everybody. I mean, here's this individual that's just absolutely killing it in his, in his industry, in his discipline, and he's saying, I didn't discover my calling until I was in my 40s. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's great. That's so encouraging to me. And he says, this is it. He says, my calling basically is to take complicated things, and make them easy to understand for people that don't have time to understand complicated things. I can do that anywhere. For me, my calling, and I, I think that because, actually, because I was listening to that podcast, the thing that I learned from his words was how to articulate what I believe my calling is. My calling, okay, um, is to uh, know as much about as much as I possibly can in order to give that information away to help other people be more successful and look better in the work that they do. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the maven approach, right? The Yiddish turn uh, to be a maven. It's to be a, um, an intellectual middleman, to take something that's over here, learn it, and bring it in an in a easily understood, so similar to what Crouch is saying, man, I wish I could be like him in some ways, many ways, um, and ma making it palpable and easy to understand for other people, to make it accessible. So as you're working in your final projects and you're looking at your vocational identity and things that come with that, how would you articulate that? And I think that it's that it is somewhat evolving, right? You're looking at things a little bit differently, so you're seeing it through a different lens. But I think once you really, truly, as Benner talked about, um, get to know yourself better, you I, you begin to understand God better, and vice versa. You see how He's wired you, how He's made you, how He's created you. These 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 desires that you have within you. Um, and ultimately, my hope is, even from an entrepreneurial perspective, is that the work that we're doing is not ultimately for us. It doesn't end with us. It doesn't, doesn't you know, I, I have this great job and I'm making lots of money, period. No, I hope it's, I have this great job and I'm making lots of money, dot, 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 so that I can give lots of money away to those that, that need it or have none or, you know, fill in the blank with those realities. Um, so I hope that I hope that this has been uh, I hope it's been a pretty amazing class for you. I know it has for me as I've learned so much as I mentioned from all of you. So thank you again for your contributions. Um, thanks for your um, just willingness to engage um, to tackle. Huh, this is a lot of work. I get it to tackle. And, you know, and this is literally this is just scratching the surface. There is so much more. I'm looking at my shelf here and just all of these books that we could have read. Um, and all these articles that I've found over the years, I, you know, I, I taught this class face-to-face um, uh, -face in the summer and then uh, two summers ago and last spring. 
um, and I had this binder just, just, I don't know, this, just, I don't know, it was like this, it felt like, it felt like the, 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 the thickness of War and Peace, if not bigger, full of articles on this topic. And that, again, that was even just scratching, scratching the surface. You know, we talk about vocation like it's this brand new idea, and yet, you know, we refer back to the Lutheran um, approach, to, to Luther and how it really came out of the Reformation, which is fitting because here we are on the 500th anniversary thereof. Um, but there's so much more, and I hope that you will continue. You know, I, I know that you have other classes still to complete, but I hope that you will, you know, uh, continue on the journey of discovering um, the truths and, and I think the freedom uh, that are found in this idea of, of, of looking at your work, your calling, through a vocational lens to understand um, that there's so much more to what we do than just punching in, punching out, and getting a paycheck. So thanks for that. Thanks, thanks for all of your contributions, um, and uh, thanks for your communication, and I, I'm so appreciative of what this term um, has been for all of us. So, so kudos to you. Uh, still a couple things to be submitted. Okay, so let me make one comment. Um, I was emailed earlier today by a, a, one of your uh, classmates um, and asked a question about grades. And um, I'm so glad that they did because uh, it was brought to my attention that the grades that I had entered when I mentioned that all the grades were updated um, hadn't translated over and been released to you on your end. So I have uh, remedied that. I, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I'm not sure how that didn't get released. Um, it was, you know, I, I thought I clicked all the buttons to make sure that everything got uh, released on your end of things. And so um, if if you did see them, um, which looking at some of the settings and how they were kind of structured, I don't know how you could have. But if you did, you're great. But if you hadn't, let me just say I'm so sorry. Um, they're all updated now. You should be able to see everything. So it was a pretty simple fix. It's just something that I needed to rectify. And so I apologize for uh, the confusion there. And I appreciate, I appreciate your willingness to contact me and let me know what's going on and ask the questions. So your grades, uh, while they have been updated for uh, quite a while now, um, are actually uh, all revealed to you and you can see them on your end. So so there you are with that. Uh, three things still to be completed in addition to kind of finishing up with your forum discussions and your uh, contributions in, in that. Um, you have your uh, vocational uh, profile plan, obviously. You have your career development uh, project presentation. Um, and those are, you know, you've got until next week to get those in. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you do not need to um, go back and forth in conversation with your classmates on their presentations. Um, I would encourage you to watch them. You still want to upload uh, the documentation and all of that so you can share that. Um, but you you don't need to actually engage in discussion. Okay, so that's going to be important for you to remember. Uh, the vocational profile plan, obviously that's on your own, so you'll submit that to Sakai as well. And then lastly, remember that you do have um, your informed uh, contribution self-assessment, okay? So, you know, looking at all of this, you know, did you engage, you know, most all of you engage in every single form of discussion, but I want to hear from you why you think you deserve the grade that you did. Did you do all the reading? Did you did you engage with everything that was there? You know, can you rightly, rightfully say I think I deserve, you know, a, um, a ten out of ten, or whatever, you know, I deserve a full credit on that assignment? And if so, tell me why. You know, I think one of the things that I find, I'll just say this up front, I have no problem saying this. One of the things that happens, I would say probably every semester that I do this, is I have a student that says, oh, I think I deserve mm, uh, an 8.5. And I'm like, 8.5, really? That's, think, that's all you think you deserve? Um, I think you deserve a 10, or I think you deserve a 9.5. Or I've had students say, I think I deserve a six. I'm like, what, are you crazy? No, you don't deserve a six. You deserve a nine because you did great. So I do find the students are oftentimes, if not always, when they give themselves lesser grades, uh, they're harder on themselves. But if you, you know, in your heart of hearts, you know, you know, hey, I kind of skimped through on a, a couple of these things. I didn't read this full book. I didn't engage here. Um, and you know that you shouldn't be giving yourself full credit, then I would just ask you, don't give yourself. And so obviously, it's up to my discretion. I get to, you know, affer agree with it or not. But just be honest with that process, okay? So again, uh, those are the three things that are due. 
Thank you for a great term. If I can ever be of help after the fact, please contact me. I've really enjoyed learning with you. I look forward to the rest of your assignments. And I, uh, uh, again, I'm so thankful. Have a great weekend.